Welcome to the future of real estate. Your chance to find out what's going on in real estate and the real estate market. This morning show is brought to you by the Ellis team at Remax Realty Group. Remax's award winner for most transactions in Florida. With the Ellis team at Remax, it's a family affair. Always call the Ellis team, they'll handle you with care. Welcome back to the Future of Real Estate. I'm Brett Ellis of the Ellis team at Remax. Don't forget, you can always find us at www.topagent.com. Our phone number is 239-489-4042. Uh, with us today is special guest, Lee County Sheriff, Mike Scott. Welcome back. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, I wanted to get to a topic here because this one, I could pontificate if you let me. It's uh, the red light cameras. Now, oh I don't know what your philosophy is on this, but I was done in Naples, and those darn things, to me, that's a safety because I thought there was lightning going on around the area, and it's like boom, 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 like at airport polling and uh, 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 what, what it was airport polling and uh, Immokalee Road. Those things are just flashing like crazy, and it's like I thought that was very distracting. It actually could do more harm than good. Now you may not see it that way, but as a consumer, I felt that you know, as a driver, sure, a lot of controversy surrounding the, the photo enforcement. Uh, obviously, the, the first and foremost reason for any type of traffic enforcement, whether it's a camera or a deputy, is to change driver behavior. It's not to generate revenue. It's not to hassle people. It's not to create distractions. It's to try to change driver behavior because we are killing and injuring and continue to kill and injure more people by automobile than any other th thing on our road. It's very dangerous to drive on the road. With that said, until the uh, legal challenges and the legal thresholds are met on this enforcement, I don't believe that Lee County uh, should move in that direction. Why would we invest and, and, and move into something that's not really met the legal challenge? If and when it does, then that's another debate to be had. You know, right turns on red are, of course, enforced with the camera. Those aren't typically what cause crashes. It's that cross-intersection red light runner. The person that says, it's yellow, I don't care, I'm in a hurry, the whole world revolves around me, I'm going anyway. And we know that that happens on a regular basis. We can't have a trooper or a deputy on every corner. We, we can certainly have a camera on every corner, or at least at all the major intersections around the clock. So there are merits like everything. There are pros and cons. Uh, I support photo enforcement. However, there is ground that needs to be covered yet, legal ground and other, that, that before we can really move uh, quickly into that, I think. That's my opinion. So I'm more for instant replay. So if there's a dispute yeah. about what happened, you go to the film and see what happened in instant replay. But I don't like the photo enforcement. Let me tell you why. And I'm, I don't. I would hope it doesn't stand up to a legal challenge because there's there's two, two scenarios. The first is I've been in traffic situations, and then I've seen where something's coming at me, and I'm forced to stay in that intersection and I let it clear. That's what any responsible driver would do. And then you go. But if that if you get caught in a camera, boom, all the camera knows is it's a one eight one sixteenth of a second in time. Right. You're in an intersection when it's red. Well. To me, that's not due process in terms of what was the reason you were in that intersection. You know, there could have been someone, a bum, walking through the intersection. You don't want to hit them. Correct. So, or uh, or an elderly person who just, just takes too long to, you know, and so you can't hit them, but you're in the intersection or something. So the other thing is this, the other due process issue I have is, let's say I go from Home Depot down in South Fort Myers up to the, the bridge, the North Bridge. And on the way, there's four lights. And I happen to miss those things by an eighth of a second each. So potentially, I have four traffic violations. I could lose my license for a year or two if I get four violations. I didn't have that due process. You know, if, if someone pulls me over, I get a ticket. It'll probably change your behavior for most. Right. But I've got unknown tickets I don't know about yet for another week or so. So I haven't had the opportunity to change my behavior or think about it or worry about the points or worry about this. And I just think that's a problem. You should be, there should be a warning that says, hey, you just got a ticket. There are definitely uh, flaws in the system, clearly. And of course, no system is perfect. Nothing is perfect, so to speak. But uh, there are definitely concerns. And I share those concerns. And that's why I said that I don't think that we, certainly as a county here in Lee, now I know Collier has moved forward, but Collier, of course, is experiencing problems. Um, to, to move forward just yet 
full-blown, full steam ahead with photo enforcement. Um, photo enforcement has been in place for many years at toll plazas and, and, and other areas. It's not a new concept by any means. And other states use it with regularity. California comes to mind and others. But there are things, I believe, that need to be identified. You've mentioned a couple. I've mentioned a couple. And I think, you know, we agree. We can all agree on two things. One, it's dangerous out on the roadways. We don't want people running red lights, speeding, driving recklessly or impaired. So we've got to continue to exert pressure on that. However, we want to do so in a judicious way, as you just mentioned. Fair way. Exactly. exactly. And that's critically important. And so I concur with that. Hey, I wanted to ask you, I've got a couple kids in school, as you do, and um, Lee County School Resource Officers, what is the deal with that? Because we talked about the budget last segment, but I appreciate having those officers there because those officers, they really get to know the students and the parents and and, uh, sometimes the step-parents that are picking up kids and all the issues. And, you know, I've heard I've heard proposals to maybe pull the, to save money, pro, you know, pull those officers out. Would that save us any money? I don't think it would. Uh, there have there have been uh, discussions along that line. And what happens is it, the officer that's at the school, you hit the nail on the head. He knows Johnny the, the bad guy from Johnny the good guy. He knows the parent from the stranger. He knows the principal from the uh, maintenance person. So he knows the climate of of the school and the and the surroundings. It's basically a city within the city. Now, if he or she is not in that campus, that doesn't mean law enforcement isn't still going to continue to go to that campus and deal with issues, whatever they may be. could be some type of a, of a fight, an altercation. It could be a disturbance of some sort of theft. It could be a drug issue. Uh, you know, we want to keep that a safe learning environment so that teachers can teach, students can learn, and we weed out the, the few, the very few, and I have to emphasize that, that are uh, astray. We're going to go one way or the other. We're either already there, stationed there with a common, good foundation knowledge of the whole uh, you know, climate and, and, and surroundings, or we're going to respond from the outside in and have to sort of go through that learning curve every day. Of, this is the principal. This is the deputy. Exactly. Who, you know, who's the problem? Who's the, you know, who right. likely did what? Consuming, plus the layout of the school. I mean, you know, these schools are complicated, so you've got to go to front office. You're not already there if it is an altercation or something. My thought is that it, we've been doing it for 30 years, by the way. This started uh, way, way back in uh, early 80, and I, I think that it's become, if you will, a core level of service. Um, there are other dynamics at play here. They're all county schools, but obviously some of the county schools are in the city limits. So some people say, well, wait a minute, in Cape Coral, we're paying a Cape Coral tax dollar to the county, it's a county school, and yet our city officers are in the school. Shouldn't it be the county? So there's internal dynamics in terms of who should be in the schools. I think most parents, principals, teachers, and probably even students uh, and citizens on the outside like you and I now would agree that uh, it's, it's a good thing to have in our schools. And uh, so I support the school resource officer program. I can tell you that this year moving forward, we will be in all the middle and high schools in the county. Well, I've per- personally witnessed where some – uh, potential stray kids have actually leaned on the resource officer Correct. for advice and not counseling, but just kind of, it's almost like having maybe, maybe they don't have someone at home to talk to, but they got someone they trust. Right. Now if they cross over the line, they'll still get in trouble and sure. get arrested, whatnot, but, or detained, but they still have someone that they know is that they can trust. And that's, it's invaluable, especially when you don't have that at home or you don't have that, you know, maybe you don't have many friends at school, whatever. That's invaluable for two reasons. One, what you mentioned, the uniform it typically brings about, hopefully, and that's what we encourage our guys and gals to do, establish and build that dialogue and communication. In doing so, you hope to help the child, student, as you just mentioned. We also develop enormous, enormous amounts of information. If you want to know where the underage drinking is or the fake ID mill or whatever, ask a 15 or 16-year-old, okay? <laughs> they know. So in terms of getting um, intelligence information, who's selling drugs? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? Who talked about bringing a weapon onto campus? Heaven forbid. That's where that dialogue and that relationship is imperative. So it's a good, it's a great program. Absolutely. Well, I fully support that program and hope we never have to make cuts there. Uh, well, you've been watching The Future of Real Estate presented by the LS team at REMAX. I really want to thank Lee County Sheriff Mike Scott. Uh, great, great uh, guest as always and thank very you. informative. And uh, uh, we'll have to get you back on here one of these days real soon. Anytime. Okay, thank you.